Welcome back to KC Talks EV and yes I'm finally in the BYD Dolphin. First of all I just want to give a massive thank you to the team at BYD UK for lending me this vehicle for testing purposes. I have left a link in the video description if you would like to find out more. So in terms of the test route today it's going to be from Lutterworth up towards the Barnetby Interchange towards Grimsby. I am going to go a little bit further on this test route compared to the Vauxhall Astro Electric just to get a bit more representative result across the entire state of charge. In terms of weather conditions, we're looking at 21 degrees, so it is slightly warmer compared to the Vauxhall Astro Electric, and we've got a crosswind of around 10 miles an hour. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we've just ticked over the 50 mile mark. So efficiency is 24.3 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Average speed is 60 miles an hour. As I mentioned, I've already hit a 50 mile an hour average speed check zone again, and I am on 70% state of charge. So we've used 24% in order to do 50 miles. Okay, so we've just ticked over the 100 mile mark. So we're averaging 26.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, and we're averaging 59 miles per hour. Okay, so the range test is now complete. I arrived here with 43% state of charge and 106 miles remaining. Um, essentially, we did 115 miles, we averaged 59 miles per hour. And if you take the two averages, so from the 50 miles in and the 100 miles in, we end up with a average efficiency of 3.94 miles per kilowatt hour. That is actually definitely an improvement over things like the BYD Atto 3. Note that the BYD Atto 3 actually has the same battery pack, so I think it's 60.48 kilowatt hour battery pack um, as the Dolphin that I've got here. Bear in mind though, you can also buy the Dolphin in the UK with a smaller, I think it's 44.9 or 45 kilowatt hour battery pack. So overall, yep, yeah, that is to be expected. This car is not a compact SUV, it is a um, family hatchback basically. It's got lower ground clearance, therefore meaning probably a lot lower frontal area. It's definitely going to be a bit more aerodynamic. Now, if you take that result and you um, do the calculations to calculate available capacity, you end up with a available capacity of 57.23 kilowatt hours. Now, that is 
pretty much on par within the margin of error for what I got previously. I think with the Atto 3, it was somewhere around 56.5 kilowatt hours available capacity. So yeah, margin of error or alternatively um, how the buffer is perceived in the car. And finally, if you actually extrapolate that, you end up with a theoretical 100% down to 0% range of 225.5 miles. And finally, as of the WLTP, which is 265 miles, you get a average, um, total percentage of WLTP combined of 84.9%. That's actually pretty good. Um, if you compare it to, for example, the Vauxhall Astra Electric, it's very similar in that. And again, bear in mind, though, we are doing this in effectively what the WLTP conditions would be. This range test is always a bit harsher on the car compared to the actual WLTP combined um, test. And it is a fairly representative result, given the fact that, you know, in the UK, at least, you're not going to get that far without hitting some form of average speed check. And in throughout the entire test, I basically did the speed limit where I could. So compared to the Atto 3, yeah, three and a half miles per kilowatt hour from the Atto 3 in the previous result. And the BYD Dolphin is going to be slightly more efficient. Um, I can pretty much say that with a pretty reasonable amount of certainty because we had a very similar average speed. And the fact is, is that this car should do better in comparison to a lot of its competitors. So, for example, the MG4. This vehicle um, is probably ever so slightly more efficient. It's very difficult to say because the MG4 test was done at a much um, colder temperature. But at the end of the day, we're probably looking at fairly similar efficiency. You might end up actually doing slightly better with the BYD Dolphin compared to the MG4. And that's primarily because this vehicle has a heat pump with um, heat pump system. Whereas as far as I'm aware, I don't think the MG4 has a heat pump. I might be wrong with that one, uh, which might explain the reason why at lower temperatures where I do have to keep the heating on um, in order to keep the cabin at a reasonable temperature, you are going to get less efficiency out of it. So I think that is pretty much it in terms of the range test video. Please leave a comment below to let me know what you think about the BYD Dolphin and how well it did on its range test. Let me know actually on other vehicles that you think that I should be testing as part of uh, the YouTube channel. And I think that it really is pretty much it. So if you like the video or you found it informative, please like it, dislike it if you didn't. Please share this to anyone who is considering purchasing one of the BYD vehicles. Don't forget as well, I have actually also reviewed the BYD Atto 3 and I'll leave a link um, probably up here or here, I'm not so sure. And I think that is pretty much it. So thank you for watching and talk to you later.